Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, Painter Master Elite, and I'd like to show you um, some cr some additional creative ways to work with uh, Painter Essential 6. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to work from a sketch and to simply paint by hand. Let me show you, first of all, the process that I used here to create the sketch. Um, the sketch was done on a uh, Let's go ahead and take a look at the canvas size. So we'll go ahead and choose canvas and then resize. And you can see that I started on a fairly large um, canvas size to work with. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, take that into consideration when you're working, um, making sure that it's not too big or too large. And in this case, if I don't plan on printing this particular piece, I would probably work at a little bit smaller size. So, um, but in terms of what I'm working with today, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it at uh, the, the uh, size and resolution that you see here, and I'll go ahead and cancel that. I started the um, the actual sketch by using the pencil brush category, and we'll go ahead and open that and go to pencils, pens, and markers and I use the grainy cover pencil to create this sketch of um, some day lilies. Finally, to give uh, based upon the particular uh, brush category that we're going to be working with, I wanted to impart a rather traditional um, paper, watercolor paper look to the image. So I incorporated and added a watercolor paper overlay uh, on top of the sketch to get started with. And that's done by simply choosing File, Place, opening that particular watercolor paper uh, file that you have, and placing it uh, on a new layer. And as you do that, it will automatically be placed on a layer and then you can go forward and use it. I went ahead and locked the layer uh, also because I don't want to uh, paint on the watercolor paper and then finally before I begin the painting process I'm going to go ahead and lift the sketch to its own layer and that way I can go ahead and lock that as well. So I'm going to go, go ahead and choose select all and then select float and you'll notice that that adds the uh, canvas layer or that sketch to its own layer now. I'm just going to simply drag it down below the watercolor paper and then come down and lock that layer. And now I'm basically ready to go. At any point um, uh, I can lower the opacity, I can close, open and close the visibility on that layer by opening and closing the visibility icon. And my final step here is I'll set this composite method to multiply so I give it lots of transparency as I work on the layers below. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer directly above the canvas and this is actually the layer that I'm going to be painting on. And today I'm going to be working in the digital watercolor brush category and I'm going to work with a brush called New Simple Water and we're going to go ahead and select that. In this particular approach um, with watercolor um, I'm going to start off by working uh, my values, uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, basically start by painting in my lightest values. And you'll notice that I, as I start this, this is a beautiful brush to work with because uh, very light pressure will give you a very light color, and that's kind of what I'm after here. I'm, I want to really get uh, those light values in first, and then I'm going to go to my darkest values, and then I'll end up with my uh, mid-tones. And by doing that, um, it will help to dictate where I can go darker and where I can uh, go lighter in my particular painting. 
So let me show you uh, in the corner here, and let me uh, just go ahead and add a new layer. If I put firm pressure on this brush, you can see that I get a more saturated brush stroke. And um, very traditionally, uh, in watercolor, uh, if we pull the edges out, you can see that you can soften those edges just very nicely by using a very, very, very soft pressure. And uh, this is what we call feathering the edges or softening the edges in, in traditional watercolor. And it does a very fine job of that. So firm pressure and light pressure, you'll get a nice highlight coming out or you can go around the edges where you may need to soften an edge and just with very very soft pressure you can pull those pull those edges out very nicely. So I'm going to continue this process uh, through the entire painting here uh, in the entire sketch until I have filled in all my lightest values and that would include my leaves and my petals and this is a time-consuming process. It's important also um, as I fill in these petals that I follow the contours of the petals as well. So you'll notice that my brush strokes are basically coming from the center and working out. So I get a nice uh, flow. And as I do this, I'm almost creating some nice visual texture in the flower petals as well. So lightest values first. Now once we have our lightest values in, um, we're going to be adding a new layer and then developing our darkest values. So I'm going to um, go to layer 2 and I'm going to double click on that layer and you'll notice that when I do that it highlights the layer and I have the option to change the name of that particular layer. So I'm going to call this light values. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer directly above that. And we're going to call this one our darkest or dark values. And we're going to begin by developing our darkest values on this particular layer. So I'm going to stick with this color scheme that I'm in here and uh, maybe go a little pinker there and now I'm going to take this color down quite dark and I'm going to begin by putting in some of these areas that I feel need to be darker in order to tell the viewer and also the most important thing is to start creating some depth and dimension uh, within the piece. And again, you can work with this brush uh, very nicely throughout the whole painting. Um, it's really a fun brush to work with. Again, dark or hard pressure, and you'll get a very, very dark value. Very saturated paint coming through, and then lighter pressure and you can just soften those edges a little bit. So anywhere where I'm looking to bring in the look of you know being able to show a value change within these flowers will help to start create creating the dimension and uh, volume within the flowers themselves. You can soften that edge as you get out towards the end and then a little bit nice firm pressure at the corners 
and you can see that by applying this method of light and dark against each other, you can really help to create that look as if that petal is really directly in back of this petal here. So you start creating that feeling of, of dimension. Soft pressure and firm pressure. You can even turn off your your sketch layer from time to time and see how the flowers are forming, see how they're coming together. As you continue to work here um, and you start to incorporate these lighter and darker values, you can begin working with a kind of what we call a little stippling brush stroke that helps to create the visual texture within the flower petals. And again, firm pressure for darker and then very soft light pressure and you can blend those edges out. Always watching our values, keeping and maintaining a good light source. and helping to show dimension and form within each one of these flower petals. Nice firm pressure to create that line between those two petals and soft pressure to just feather that edge. And we'll do the same on this side. We want to show an edge here. And we'll go ahead and feather that softly and just let it flow right down through the petal. With a smaller brush tip size, you can begin to uh, do some of the veining on each of the petals and this adds this begins to add some of that uh, interesting detail that you'll want to include in your flower and again nice firm pressure and you'll get a nice saturated line and softer pressure, a very light. And you'll want that in some areas. You want to have always showing that combination of light and dark. And this also again helps to define the shape of the petals. I think adds some nice interest to the petals as well. And here I can begin to start to go into some darker values. I'm 
and the surrounding elements. And we'll go quite dark, very dark green for the stem. go back to our pink color here and we'll go with a very very dark shade here and I'll just soften that edge a little bit and we'll do the same by starting to darken the values of the green or the green area and green leaves within these grouping of flowers. going to move over to yellow now and add a little bit of these nice bright yellow values in and again I'm going to add a new layer and start to pull in a little bit of yellow and this would be called um, in traditional painting we would call this glazing and you'll notice that by doing so we create uh, you know, a nice um, overlay of color. It doesn't completely, it, it tones the pink a little bit, adds a little warmer value overall, and starts to bring everything into harmony and working together. We'll work a little on these stamen areas as well. And we'll do some fine work on that area. And we'll incorporate a little bit of those green values into this area as well. A little sample. back to this nice pink and go quite dark and we'll use that in these little pod areas And then we'll top that off by adding a little bit much darker value than to the stamen of the flower.
a little bit darker pink just to bring out some of the detail in these stamen. So you can see the fun you can have with simply doing your own freehand painting in Painter Essential 6. Finally, I think I will go ahead and add one more layer here and do a little bit more glazing with a nice bright pink. And this will help to really brighten things up a little bit. And I'm using quite soft pressure here. And I think that really starts to bring everything together. Uh, we'll do the same with our green here. And just brighten these areas up a bit. that should about do it, I think. Um, yeah, a little bit more pink. And I think, um, you know, it's hard to know when to stop on some of these. I think you can uh, find that you'll keep painting away. Um, these type of flower arrangements are uh, fun to do because they they really you know you really can add so much more uh, to them. Let's take a look at some of the other uh, brushes we have here and maybe even take the spatter water with a nice pink and maybe let's see brush size. We'll go ahead and add a new layer here and bring the brush size up a little bit larger here. We'll see how big we can get here with it just to add maybe some textural interest. Let's do this. Let's go with a quite dark value here with a small brush and then just use it to incorporate a little more texture into the center of the flowers. And I think that will add a nice touch. sample that green and maybe use a little bit of that on the seed pods. Go a little darker. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, painting demonstration of freehand painting with Painter Essential 6. Lots of fun.